Happy Thursday, everybody. My name is Michael Gibson. I'm on my favorite topic of why I go to church. Part 55, the double nickel. I labeled this to sleep through the storm and all storms are not natural. Some storms are unnatural. Some storms are sent. So the reason why I chose this topic because I see storms, I witness storms, and storms can be scary, especially when you are immature, not by age, but by spiritual growth, by spiritual maturity. So when storms come in life, I've been around some animals that when the storm comes and the, the, th the thunder comes down, people run. I mean, they run fast. It's like the how I seen the animal put their tail between their legs because just the sound of the thunder, to see the lightning can cause people to fear and for people to be panicked. So I go to church, I read my word, and again, I say this over and over, we are the church. We are the church. Where we go to fellowship, we call the church, but we the people are the church because God is a spirit and he resides on the inside of us. And without his guidance, without his direction, there would be no kingdom here on the earth. So just to reiterate that point, but when I read the Bible, there's always something that can be made alive to you at any moment. And during my time of reading and during my time of study, I'm always amazed when I go live and some of the shenanigans that happen in the atmosphere. But this is why I go to church part 55 and I'm talking about the storms. Some storms are natural and some storms are unnatural. And being a believer, you have to learn to differentiate the difference between the type of storm that you're in. So when I read the word, God always confirms his word and gives me an opportunity to feel comfortable in the storm. So my goal in life is to be able to sleep through the storm. And when I read the word, it just it it provides a level of comfort for me because god is not a respecter of person if he did it before he'll do it again so there's a passage in the bible when god um told his disciples let us go to the other side and when they got into the boat a storm rose up and it seemed like an unnatural storm had arose and while they were in the storm, they began to get panicked. They began to look at the waves. They began to look at the sea. They began to look at their environment. And they basically said, Rabbi, Master, have you left me here to die? That's what they were thinking. And they began to look for their master. And he was nowhere to be found. And the reason that he was nowhere to be found is because he was actually sleeping during the storm. I go to church because I want to have the ability to sleep during the storm. In order for you to be able to sleep during the storm, you must be able to recall the word that God spoke in your life. You must be in a position to recall that word. When God told his disciples that we were going to the other side, he was not in doubt. He was fully assured that they were going to go to the other side. And, it, and it's in that confidence in the word of God that you should be able to rise up and rest and sleep during your storm. And the reason why I said that some storms are natural and other storms are, are, are unnatural in this case, if you read through the Gospels, 
you'll learn that there was a man on the other side of the shore that was full of a legion of devils. And then that legion of devils caused the storm. Because when God went to the other side, he actually freed the man that had the legion of devils. And that man began to publish or preach the word in Decapolis. Sometimes storms come because of the assignment that you are called to bring forth. Sometimes storms come to derail you, to sidetrack you, to push you off the thing that God told you to deliver. Sometimes the storm will come because you have a birth. You have something to birth in someone else. And when Jesus got to the other side, he freed the man from the hands of the enemy. And that man began to establish other churches from the word that Jesus had for him. And one thing that I find comforting is that when God gives you a word, when God gives you a vision, stand firm, stand fast, that that vision shall come to pass. Don't let the waves move you. Don't let the storm move you. Don't let the thunder move you. Don't let the lightning move you. You have to know that your creator, the one that sits and that sent his spirit to reside on the inside of you, that creator, he is the one that hung the moon and the stars. He is the one that caused the sea to only go but so far. And when you recognize that the one that allows the sea to go but so far lives on the inside of you, you will begin to speak to your storms. You will be able to tell your storm peace, be still. Because unnatural storms are usually formed by the hand of the enemy. They are formed by the hands of your enemy to keep you from doing the thing that God has called you to do. But when you understand that your enemy is just a footstool, you will begin to declare the word of God that he told you before you started out on the journey. Because as I said in this story, God told the disciples that they were going to go to the other side. So if God told you that you were going to accomplish something, that you were going to be something, that you are supposed to do something, rest assured on the promises of God. And don't let the unnatural storm derail you. You must speak to something, for something to happen. Your voice is the most powerful thing that you ever have because your words are not just words. Your words are spiritual container. Your words contain power. Your words will call electrons, protons, and neutrons to move. Your words will actually cause things that don't think that they are alive to actually move. Because remember, everything that we see in this natural realm is made of the things that we don't see in the unseen realm, in the spiritual realm. So I go to church, I dive in my word because I want to be able to recognize the storm because there are natural rains that fall and those rain provide benefits to the flowers. Those rains provide benefits to the seeds. Those rains have a purpose. But then there is a storm that seems to arise when you get a word from God. That storm seems to arise when you get a, a word from God. There are some storms that seem to rise up real heavy when you start moving in your purpose, when you start moving into the plan that God has for you, recognize that storm. And when that storm rise, you can go to sleep. You can go to sleep. If God said that you were gonna have a business, rest assured on the promise that the moment you start to move in that business, there are gonna be some storms that come. But do like the word said, speak to the storm, cause it to obey the word of God. Speak the word over your storm. When you speak the word of your storm, you can begin to rest on your storm. Rest in the midst of your storm. Because there are going to be people in your boat that will begin to get panicked. The reason why those people get panicked is because God didn't necessarily speak the word or the vision to them. And you have to stand sure on the vision that God has spoken to you for your life. You have to stand firm. You have to stand sure on the vision that God has spoken for your life. 
Because if God said you were going to make it to the other side, you will make it to the other side. If you stand firm on your profession or your confession of your faith. Thank you for uh, joining back, Serena. Stand firm on the word of God. If God said you're going to make it to the other side, you will make it to the other side. But you have to follow what he has done. You have to follow his plan. He did not get panicked. He just simply got up and told the sea, told the wind, told the storm, told the waves to obey him. Know when you speak, the atmosphere is shifting. There is something that is happening in the cosmos every time you speak. The question is, do you have faith when you speak? Do you believe yourself when you speak? Do you not doubt in your heart? It's okay to doubt in your head, but don't doubt in your heart. Your head, right, takes information that it got from the world and from the word, and it tries to process both of them. Faith doesn't deny the facts. Faith just denies the power of the facts. And how much faith you have deposited in your heart is really based on how much word you have implanted in your heart. So the size of your faith really does determine how you see your mountain. When we keep singing these songs that are heartfelt, but not biblically based, it can make you turn your molehill into a mountain. You can turn your molehill into a mountain by the lack of faith that you have. You turn your molehill into a mountain, that happens when you stare at your problem instead of magnifying your God. When you see songs, when you sing songs, excuse me, that feel good, but not biblically based, you will actually climb a mountain. You will actually begin to climb a mountain. But if you go dig in your word, God didn't climb not one mountain. He did not even climb the mountain. He simply spoke to the mountain. He co simply commanded the mountain to move. Not only did he command his mountain to move, he gave his mountain specific instructions on where it belonged. I want to encourage you to speak to the mountains that are in your life. Command the storm. Don't allow the storm to command you because there are many things in life that will come in your way to get you off the thing that God has told you to do. So the unnatural storms come when you begin to move. The unnatural storms will arise when you start doing what God has called you to do because the unseen realm reacts to movement. The unseen realm reacts to movement. When you are still, your enemy is not concerned about you. But when you begin to take territory, when you begin to make progress, when you begin to snatch souls from his camp to the kingdom, the enemy has nothing else to do but to bring up a storm to try to get you to move off your square. So I dive in this word so that I can learn the difference between the storms, learn the difference between the natural rain and that unnatural rain. When the unnatural rain comes, I can stand sure on the peace that God has promised me in his word, for the peace that God said, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. That your labor of love is not in vain, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Be encouraged, stay encouraged. It's not always easy, but it's worth it. And don't let the enemy st steal your joy because the moment you begin to move, the enemy begins to counter move. You also must know that the enemy sends people too. The enemy might have people in your boat that you might need to throw overboard. I'm not saying that all your friends are not your friends, but ask God for the spirit of discernment so that, or it's actually called the discerning of spirit. Ask God to give you the ability to discern who's in your camp. Because truthfully, if you have people in your camp that don't believe like you believe, that don't believe like you believe, they can stunt your growth. They can stunt your dream. 
They can keep you trapped in the boat. God said that you would go to the other side. That meant that you were going to get in the boat, that you were going to safely cross the, cross the waters and get out the boat. Don't allow dream, dream killers to keep you in the boat. Don't allow dream killers to allow you to jump out of the boat into the river where you actually could die. The boat is not going to fall apart on you. Your dream is not going to fall apart on you. Your purpose is not going to fall apart on you. You will get to the other side. If that's the word that God spoke to you, if that's the plan that God has for you, you will make it. There are going to be some rough times. There are going to be some high waves. But just know the God that hung the sun, moon, and the stars, the God that actually commands the sea to tell it only can go but so far, that's the spirit that's inside of you. You are made in, in the image and the likeness of God. That means you have the same ability if you tap into his ability. Our whole goal in reading this word is so that we can tap into the ability of our creator. Because our creator gives us the ability to create by the words that we speak. We all have creative ability by the power of our words. And I want you to begin to get into the power of your words. So this is why I come on here every week to speak about why I go to church, because I'm learning to tap into my creative ability. I'm learning to be able to discern the difference between natural rain and unnatural rain. God actually wants us to rain, R-E rain. God wants us to rain, but you can't rain when you don't know what to say in the middle of your storm. You can't rain when the people that actually are around you lose faith. Somebody got to hold on to God's unchanged hand. Somebody got to hold on to the faith that God has planted. Somebody got to believe the word that it will accomplish that what it was sent out to do. Somebody has to believe. And just getting back to my original point, when God told them that they were going to go to the other side, when they got to the other side, they actually delivered a man that had a legion the devil's on the inside of him. They freed that man, or God freed that man. And when that man became freed, he actually established churches in other cities. Who are you supposed to free today? Who are you supposed to free today? Stand firm on the word. Hold fast to your dream. Hold fast to your purpose. Because someone's life is depending on you to get to the other side. If this message has blessed you. I pray that you share it out. This is Michael Gibson, and it's why I go to church. I go to church to discern the storm. I go to church to learn how to speak to the wind. I go to church that I can find out the promises of God are yes and amen. I go to church to discern who is the wolf and sheep's clothing. There are many, many, many reasons why I go, but the main reason why I go, because I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that it was his blood that allows me to stand here today without shame or guilt. It is the wonder working power of the blood of God. And the reason why that, that blood is so powerful, because people had sinned but the death angel passed over. The death angel passed over, had nothing to do the, with the condition of the people. The death angel passed over those people in Exodus because they were obedient. The death angel passed over because they applied the blood. If you wanna be saved today, if you wanna be spared, apply the blood. Apply the blood of Jesus to your life because your condition has nothing to do with the power of his blood. Your sin in the past has nothing to do with the power of his blood. His blood was shed once for all and his blood has the power to redeem all who believe and who are willing to apply that blood to their life. When you apply his blood to your life, you truly will get to the other side. 
whether it's in this realm or the next, God will always cause us to triumph. God would always cause us to win. But God didn't say that there wouldn't be any storms in our life. God just said that you can speak to your storm. God said that you will make it to the other side. So when there are rough rivers, when there is lightning, when there is waves that may even, when the water may get in your boat, stay in the boat. Don't jump out of your boat. Just stay on the more sure word of prophecy that God has given to you. Don't jump out of your boat. Stay in your boat and be confident the thing that God has said to you, that thing, that word will come to pass in your life. I don't know what word God has spoken to you. I don't know what prophecy may have been spoken into your life, but I pray that if God made a promise to you, that you don't say that God is slack on his promise. God is not slacked in his promises. His promises are yes and amen. His promises can come with blessing and his promises can come with curses. It really depends on your level of obedience and your willingness to hear the truth in the midst of chaos. Stay in the boat, go to the other side because you may be free in a life today. You may be birthing someone. You may be birthing someone. You may be birthing someone that has the ability to set another one free because I really believe that it's just about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. You can't advance the kingdom if you don't spend any time learning about the kingdom. You can't advance the kingdom if you don't read any of the kingdom word. If you can't advance the kingdom, if you don't apply the blood, because only those that apply the blood will be spared. Only those that apply the blood will be spared because the people that apply the blood acknowledge that they need a savior. The people that apply the blood acknowledge that Jesus came and died. The people that apply the blood believe in the resurrection of his power and the ascension to sit on the right hand. The people that apply the blood know that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. That means you gotta be consistent. Stay consistent. Be confident. Stand strong on the word of God. Stand strong. This message blessed you again. Share it out. It's Michael Gibson. That's why I go to church. So that I can stay in my boat. Because I know that all storms are not natural. Some of them were sent to move me off my square. I'm not getting off my square. So I encourage you to stay in your square. Have a blessed day.